So, <clears throat> what's happening here now, if I dug down 14 inches and maybe took a 100 square foot area of this and measured how much total humus is in the ground here, um, it would be it would be hundreds and possibly thousands of pounds of humus. Wow. And on an acre, that's huge. That's a lot of humus. That's a lot of carbon that'll be here a long time. This is a lot, to me, a lot more exciting than Tierra Preta. Than what? Tierra Preta. Yeah, Tierra Preta is basically their, their uh, it's, it's a carbon dump uh -huh. that indigenous mm -hmm. people of the Amazon uh, buried stuff that was their dump. And one of the things that got buried was uh, charcoal. Right, okay. So there are charcoal rich soils. Uh -huh. And they, they, the, the Tierra Preta concept has been promoted as a, a way of sequestering or, or storing carbon in the soil and also making soils a more fertile environment for crops. Maybe it works, I don't know. But to me, this mimics what nature really wants to do better than packing carbon and you know, charcoal into the soil. Because mm -hmm. we have to make charcoal, first of all, and that right. means that we're going to have to burn up some organic matter of some sort mm -hmm. and uh, using a, uh, the proper technique for turning it into charcoal. But that's a, you know, I don't believe that is as viable of a soil restoration process than this. So what came first, the bamboo and the mulch and then the mycorrhiza <laughs> and then the, glom the, the glomus and then the hummus or? Well, um... I started putting down humus from the very beginning. So, you, and because humus, even on a really tiny level, like 40 pounds of humus on a whole acre, will give you a benefit, a very measurable benefit. So, so that you, was the first thing we put down. But, As peat? Hmm? No, no, it's actually humus that we make. So, oh. We make it from protein. You so, make it from protein? We, we convert the amino acids of bean proteins over to oh bean proteins right it's it's a it's a uh, the bean plants we take the bean itself and fracture it and extract out the gluten yeah okay. which is your protein part of the bean okay right. and we have to use a bunch of different kinds of beans in order to get the proper ratios of amino acids mm -hmm. um, but then we convert that over to humus which are uh, the humus is a generic term or a general term uh, that represents the more technical term, humic substances. Right. And so within all of your humic substances, you have different kinds of humic acids, like right. fulvic acid uh -huh. and humic acid and so forth. Right. And so I, the, what I started off first was by spreading uh, our humus product on the ground here. We did it in tiny amounts. And then we, it, instead of using uh, a chemical fertilizer, we used the same beans uh -huh. ground up into a flour and fertilized with that. Right, okay. And uh, because, you know, when the soil's biology breaks down the protein of these beans, it slowly releases the nitrogen that was within the amino acid matrix and provides right. a slow release source of ni uh, nitrogen that the plants need. And then we started planting plants, and we had a lot of failures. We had, I probably have killed hundreds of trees on this property. Wow. Well, mainly because the soils were so tight and had such poor drainage that we drowned a lot of the trees, you know, because you dig a hole to plant a tree, and, uh, and then you try to fix the soil of the hole by adding peat moss or straw or something. That but doesn't there's, work. There's no aeration. There, well, the whole it's the, compact. The backfill itself is now aerated, but the surrounding native soil that you didn't dig up is right. not. So right. you're going to have a a zone of discontinuity between the backfill soil and the native soil, and water does not want to go from one to the other. Mm -hmm. So what was happening is that we were drowning the trees because the water would sit inside that planting site. Okay. Within that amended soil, it would just sit in there and rot the roots. Right. So I had to learn a different way of planting trees here, which I now believe is really the best way to plant trees everywhere. It doesn't okay. matter whether it's on um, on the soils of this site or out in the in the desert sand hills or whatever. Um, I had to learn a, a better technique. 
And basically the, tech, the technique is to dig your hole as small as possible, slightly larger than the root ball of the plant, and drench the sides of the hole with your medicine cabinet grade hydrogen peroxide, oh, the stuff you buy at right. the local yeah. drugstore. If you're gonna dig, if you're gonna plant a five gallon size tree, then the hole's gonna be roughly maybe 20 inches across and about maybe 12 inches deep. You're gonna use about two quarts. And you just pour the hydrogen peroxide on the sides of the hole, just dump, 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 all around the sides, straight out of the bottle, and let it run down the sides and down to the bottom, use two quarts. And what'll happen is you will see a effervescence, kind of like an Alka-Seltzer, like bubbling and fizzing that will soften the sides of the hole and the bottom of the hole so that when the roots encounter the sides and the bottom there is no side and bottom. The roots can go right through it and, in, and into the native soil. And then when you backfill put the same crummy dirt back in that you took out. Do not add anything to that backfill. We don't want a, a zone of discontinuity between the backfill soil and the native soil. Okay. We want it to be the same soil. And that way that water can make that transition. And with water also goes all of your exchangeable gases like oxygen. Okay. Roots need oxygen. So if water can move through, so can oxygen. And therefore it becomes an aerobic environment and your roots are going to be happy. And that way you don't get the roots wrapping around inside that hole, failing to escape the hole. So they managed to reach out past the ring where you put the hydrogen peroxide? Right. They'll, get, they'll be able to penetrate through. But isn't there a point where that hydrogen peroxide had no impact? And then it would the, just It only has hitting... to impact a uh, tiny, bit. tiny, you know, sixteenth of an inch or less. It has to encourage the roots to be able to right. go out. Yeah, it doesn't have to impact very deep. It yeah. just has to get just a very, very tiny zone all the way around in the bottom, that's all. Oh, really? So wait for the bubbling and fizzing to stop before you put your tree down in there. And, and once uh, the roots start growing, then they're stronger, is, they're stronger to get a, uh, strong enough to get out? Right, yeah, okay. once, once, they, once they can get out of that hole, they're on their way, okay. they're gonna go. I yeah. see. And, uh, so that's kind of how I, I had to learn through trial and error and uh, killing lots of trees here. We drowned a lot of trees. That That is the technique that works. And ever since we started doing that, I've not lost a tree. Wow. Hmm. Most of the trees that were planted on this site prior to that have either disappeared or are on their way out. Hmm. They are disappearing currently. We just cut one down today that, that predates that technique. Too many here either, but if you go over to my nursery, you'll get eaten alive. Really? Oh, uh, because you're closer to the river over there. Yeah. And uh, so there was nothing here, uh, Michael. Nope. This was dirt. Uh, dirt. Dirt. Now we have oaks wow. and all kinds of. Okay, this is my my classroom over here. Couple hundred people sitting inside. <laughs> Bow, 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 bow,